Today, I want to look at uh, one part of the Christmas story that always impacts me. The only thing I don't like about Christmas is that we, we tend to look at scriptures or sing songs that we only do like one time a year. And these are, for the believer, these themes are continuous throughout the year. And Mary is one of the great heroes of scripture. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about her and I'm because I'm, in, I'm inspired by her, her, um, her example, the way she responded to an impossible uh, challenge in front of her. So we'll look at that in a moment. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit came upon Mary, natural, spiritual. Holy Spirit came upon Mary, and she revealed Jesus. The Holy Spirit comes upon the written word. And Jesus is revealed. The Holy Spirit comes upon a surrendered believer, and Jesus is revealed. I don't at all want to lessen the significance of the role that Mary plays. She's called highly favored of the Lord. So please don't misunderstand that. However, the miracle of Jesus being manifest in and through you, me, you and me is the same miracle. It's the Spirit of God coming upon the natural to manifest the eternal. Eternity is the cornerstone of all logic and reason. Anytime we lose sight of eternity, we are bound to come to temporary and false conclusions. It's seeing things from an eternal perspective that changes everything. For example, Mary is called highly favored of the Lord. If you lose sight of eternal perspective, you look at her circumstances. Joseph wants to divorce her, not follow through with a wedding. Herod wants to kill her kid, her son. The, the uh, scandal of her being a mother of an illegitimate child looks like anything but favor. Favor on your life will reveal issues in the people around you. And our ability to carry favor well is key to the increase of favor. We never owe anyone an explanation, nor should you ever apologize for favor. Apology of favor is an expression of unbelief that basically says God made a bad decision by giving me favor. You never want to dishonor God with, with how unqualified you may feel with foreign assignment. I hope everybody in the room feels unqualified. If you feel qualified, you haven't seen your assignment. <laughs> if, if you feel qualified, you don't see it clearly because the only, the only possible response from seeing what God expects from our life is the overwhelming sense, I could never pull this off. And that's the position that the Lord puts every one of us in so that he can demonstrate who he is. Good works are a critical part of the Christian life. Uh, feeding uh, the poor, serving those with uh, clothes or housing or whatever it might be, fill in the blanks. The, the, the overall gamut of meeting uh, the demand of human need is a huge part of, of the Christian life. But if we're honest, we'll realize that feeding the poor and all these other amazing and wonderful things can be done by people who don't know the Lord. There has to be an aspect of our service before the Lord that only he can do in and through us. It has to cross the line into the realm of impossibility or it has not adequately given witness to the resurrection of Jesus. There is in every one of us an inbuilt appetite for the impossible that it would bend its knee to the name Jesus through our lips. It's critical, it's vital that that is a regular part of our life. If it is not, we have to come back before the Lord and find out why. Not introspection, but to learn where do I take risk, where do I partner. The Lord is looking for people who will come into agreement with what he has said. There's an alignment. I I almost hate to use the word alignment because cults use it, but 
we're called a cult, so maybe it's all right. I don't know. <laughs> there's this agreement, there's this alignment we make with the Lord that God declares a matter when people come into proper alignment or agreement with what he has said, there is the display of what God intends on the earth. Let's take a look at these scriptures. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take some time to talk through. It's about 12 verses. We'll take probably 20 minutes or so. And then we're going to spend the rest of the time sharing in communion together. And uh, I, uh, it's going to be two completely separate parts, but they'll both be good, I hope. All right. Let's go to verse 26. Did I tell you where, Luke? Luke chapter 1. Did I not tell you where? <laughs> oh, well, it's in, open your Bible anywhere. It's all good. Let's just start, start reading out loud wherever you open to, and we'll just see how well this works. All right. Uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Now, in the sixth month, uh, we're going to do about 12 verses, for, so just uh, follow hard. Now, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. Last two verses. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. I love this story a lot. I actually will return. This is one of the places that I will sometimes return to just to be refreshed in reading something that's out of my sequence. I I like to read books of the Bible and just go through them, but every once in a while I'll just go right to this and just plow, read through this because it's, it's so encouraging to me. <clears throat> Mary has an angel show up and make this announcement of God's intention. And everything that God has intended to do in and through you is absolutely impossible, as I've already stated. If you're not overwhelmed by your assignment, you don't see your assignment. What he intends to do is absolutely impossible. It's to put us into the place of absolute dependency so that he can work in and through us to display himself as the God of the impossible. That is his intention. And he has designed it so for every person who puts their faith in Christ. It is not for a select few. It is the design of God for every person. So the angel shows up to Mary and he says, rejoice, highly favored one. Typically, you rejoice after the baby is born. She would commanded, rejoice, it's coming. There's not one situation that anybody in this room faces that you wouldn't like to have a miracle for, that Jesus has not already settled the issue, paid the appropriate price so that that miracle could be accomplished in his name. There's not one situation. He did not pay for the car, so you and I would leave it on the lot. Everything in our life has already been settled. The cross that Jesus suffered on was that complete in its effect and in its work. There's not one thing anybody in this room could face that Jesus would look at and say, ah, 